We have seen how to use a database from the command line and from third-party softwares like dBeaver. We will now connect the database from Java application. The MySQL connector for Java is a Java Database Connectivity or GDBC driver allowing Java to interact with the MySQL or MariaDB service. To be able to use the driver from the Java code, we need to add the MySQL connector as a dependency. We already did that in the previous video. Now how do we connect the database from the code? In the documentation, we can see that it first needs to load the GDBC driver. Once that's done, we will be able to use the driver manager to create a new connection. The database to which we want to connect is identified by a URL. The syntax of that URL is that we first give the protocol, in this case GDBC MySQL, then the host, and optionally the port if we are not using the default, which is 3306, then the name of the database and optional properties. The authentication can be done either as parameters in the URL or as additional arguments to the getConnection method. The way queries are made in Java is through statements, which are executed and whose results are stored in a result set. We can then loop through the result set and retrieve the data. Let's quickly implement that in our test project. We will create a new class, Database Manager, which we will use to connect and execute queries. We first define attributes for this class, the host, port, user, password and database. We define a constructor, but we don't need getters and setters. We will load the driver and connect the database in the constructor and store the connection object as an attribute as well. Finally, we create a method to select all persons in the database and print them to the console. First, we have to create a statement, then execute the query to get the result set. If we are not sure of the name of the columns, we can use the services tab to quickly check the database structure. We then loop through the result set and get the values. We need to know the type of the values that we get. In this case, we want strings for the first and last name and dates for the birth date. To 
see which date class we need to import, we can check the signature of the getDate method, which tells us that it returns a java.sql.date object. Finally, we can format the string so that we can store it in an array list and print it to the terminal. We return the array list so that it may be used later on. To test that everything works, we now have to create an instance of this database manager in the main method and to call the print persons method. When we try to execute it, we see that we have an error with an unrecognized server time zone. Further reading the error, we can see that we ha may have to manually set the server time zone for the GDBC. We can add that as, as a parameter to our connection, setting the time zone to Brussels. We try to run the code again, and this time we see that everything works as expected. Storing the persons in strings is not very practical. A small improvement we could make to this code would be to create a person class, which would contain all the necessary information and the toString method which properly formats the text. We can then refactor the code to use this new class. Finally, it's not a very good practice to both retrieve and print the persons in the same method. Let's change our method to getPersons and print the results by looping through the array list in the main method. This would of course look a lot better in a graphical interface, but that will be for next time.